Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at the final part of the Alaska case study, focusing on oil and gas exploitation. If you haven't studied this case study, you may wish to watch the Svalbard videos instead. This is part of Paper 1, Unit B, The Living World. We have already looked at the opportunities and challenges in Alaska in the two previous videos. However, oil and gas are such huge industries within the state that we decided it was worth making a separate video. Alaska has abundant supplies of oil and gas, both across the land, but also offshore in both the Beaufort Sea and the Arctic Ocean. The oil and gas industry is enormous in this region. It employs over 100,000 people, meaning that one in seven Alaskans work in oil and gas and it generates around $50 billion annually, which is about a third of Alaska's income. OK, let's start off by talking about onshore oil production. In the 1960s, vast reserves of oil were discovered onshore close to the northern coast of Alaska, and oil production began in the late 1970s, producing around 2 million barrels of oil a day. The 800 kilometer transatlantic pipeline was constructed to transfer oil to the south coast port of Valdez as ice in the northern seas meant that oil tankers couldn't get close to the coastline. The pipeline that you can see on the screen was fairly complicated to construct. In the end it took five years and it cost eight billion dollars which would be approximately 34 billion today. However, at the time, the USA was desperate to increase its own energy security because of rising oil prices and political problems. It was a complicated project for several reasons. Firstly, because of the permafrost. This meant that the pipeline had to be raised off ground and mounted on stilts that were 11 metres deep. This meant that any heat from the pipeline wouldn't be able to melt the ground below. Secondly, major rivers. There are several that flow through Alaska, including the Yukon, which is over 700 metres wide in places. So suspension bridges were constructed so the pipeline could cross waterways. Finally, the tectonic activity. Alaska is close to a plate margin and the Pacific Ring of Fire, so there is a risk of earthquakes here. The pipeline zigzags in some areas so it can be flexible and adjust to tectonic movements. There are many benefits and costs of the oil and gas industry in Alaska. Let's discuss the benefits first. In terms of benefits, oil and gas production in Alaska provides a huge amount of jobs and accounts for around 90% of taxes raised in the state. Therefore, it funds education, health, policing and other important community services. Many people argue about the environmental impact of such production. Well, the transatlantic pipeline was extremely carefully planned to minimise the environmental impact. It goes through tundra land that is part of the caribou migration route, so part of it has been placed underground to prevent disturbance to these animals. The pipeline is also extremely well insulated, which prevents the permafrost below from melting. It also prevents the oil from freezing, which could lead to pipes bursting. OK, moving on to the drawbacks. Oil and gas production causes many issues for Alaska. Local people account for around 20% of the workers. The rest of the jobs are taken by migrant workers who tend to have short-term contracts and spend very little in the local area, which prevents the multiplier effect for the economy. There are also serious environmental impacts, particularly the risk of oil spills. The most devastating oil spill in the region occurred in 1989 when the Exxon Valdez oil tanker ran aground on the southern Alaskan coast. 1.2 million barrels were spilled with only 15% ever recovered. The impact on wildlife was huge with around 5,000 sea otters, seals and eagles dying. In addition, in 2006, a broken pipeline caused 1 million litres of oil to spill out over the North Slope region in Alaska, which is an ecologically sensitive area. The future of onshore oil production in Alaska is quite uncertain. In the 1980s, Alaska produced a quarter of all US oil. 
However, this has declined slightly and now Texas, New Mexico and North Dakota, along with the offshore area in the Gulf of Mexico, produce more. Currently, there are disagreements about the future of oil here. There are potentially up to 16 billion barrels of oil that can be exploited below the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, which is pictured on the screen. However, this is home to polar bears and many other rare species. Many people want oil to be drilled and exploited here, but luckily the US Senate voted against it, so at the moment the area is protected and safe. But what about offshore oil and gas production in Alaska? Oil exploration operations have discovered up to 30 billion barrels of oil and many trillions of cubic metres of gas below the Beaufort Sea and the Arctic Ocean, which could be exploited, opening up thousands of job opportunities and generating billions of dollars for the Alaskan economy. However, there are areas where oil drilling is not allowed, such as the breeding grounds for bowhead whales. This is not actually to protect this species, but to protect the traditional hunting practices of Native American communities who are allowed to conduct carefully controlled whale hunts as sharing whale meat as an important tribal tradition. However, most of the waters are open to exploratory oil drilling by big oil TNCs to scope potential sites for production. Oil exploration, though, is really controversial here. Traditional communities want to protect their cultural heritage and their traditions, but at the same time, they depend on the oil and gas industry for employment. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on oil and gas exploitation in Alaska. Thank you for watching.